Hello, welcome to the Carrot Juice Podcast. I am your host, Monte Lee. Here at the Carrot Juice Podcast, we observe society, we digest it, and through the nuance of it all, we attempt to progress forward. Today's topic is one that a lot of people, I know a lot of men are facing, and it's talking about how online dating has been a struggle, a real struggle for men. And we're gonna talk about the pitfalls of online dating from the perspective of a young man. Don't worry, ladies, women can benefit too because it helps to have knowledge and perspective on the plight of fellow human beings. And I have some articles for you today. It's gonna be a great show. We're gonna go through some stats, some of the actual data. I'm gonna give some of my perspective and give you some of a story or two about my experience dating as a young man. And I hope through all of it that we develop, we develop a better level of understanding with one another. So ultimately we all can get what we want. So housekeeping, if you're coming in, it's free. Come on, hit, hit me with that like, please. It's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. That's the least that you can do. And if you really enjoy the content, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. To my audio listeners, I really appreciate you. This is officially the 71st episode of the podcast. And do me a favor, rate and review the podcast, please, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you consume your podcast. I really appreciate you. Five star, five star, five star. Thank you very much. So without further delay, we're talking about online dating. And what is the problem? The problem with online dating specifically for young men is it in a nutshell has given women way too many options. Today, women have more options or they have the perception of having more options than they've ever had before. And what caused that? What was the root cause of the reason why People feel like they have so many options. It started back in, what was it? Around 2010 is when it went crazy, when the iPhone got big. And we started to see the dating apps go crazy. And people who were living in small towns before, who only had the options of the people that lived in their neighborhood or maybe the town over, had access to men all across the world from all type of different socioeconomic state statuses. And you know what went crazy? It's not to blame women, but it's just nature. They were like, why would I be with Timmy Joe from across the street when I can go get with the dude who's lit on a yacht in Miami? It completely busted the dating market. And now we are dealing with the ramifications of it as men. Here on this podcast, I am not doing this to degrade women or down women or say that they're wrong for how they've moved because they're not. I am here simply to talk about what is going on, observe it, digest the information and get some knowledge on it and some perspective. And ultimately, I'm going to give you some insight and perspective on what you can do to progress forward and how you could get the outcome that you want on the back end at the end of the day. I think that far too often with so much content, it only talks about the negative, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna give you some tangible information on what the dating scene, what online dating is currently like. So ultimately you can get some results. So I'm gonna get into some of these articles here. I have a lot of information for you today. Thank you for being here. If you're watching on the replay, don't forget to drop a like, all right? And the first thing that I wanted to get into, let's go here, boom. Whew. The first thing that we got to get into is this right here. We're going to be talking about the epidemic of, if I can get this right here, share my screen. Here we go. The dreaded foodie dates. So one of the reasons why dating has been a struggle for men is because we have this epidemic of women abusing the system and, and just going out with men, 
not for actual romantic attraction and relationships, but for just for free food. Hit him with the buzzer. Shout out to Coach Greg Adams. Let's continue. So this woman went on 16 dates in a row just for free food. Bruh. A woman said she ran out of money and wanted free food. Have you been there, fellas? Talk to me. Have you been there? I'm not going to lie. I know I have been. Forgive me, Father, for I have simped. I've been oh, there. Oh, my God. I've been, you know, 16, 17, struggling, barely, barely have a couple of nickels to, to rub together. But I'm trying to go take somebody on a date. You know, paper napkin date. I've been there. I'm not trying to knock you. And one thing that I would like to say, let me tell you a story. Listen up. Have you ever been on a, been on a date or been in a situation where you take a young lady out, you're on the date, you specifically go on this date with her because it's Taco Tuesday. The reason why you're taking her, it's $2 tacos that day. So you go, you got on, you got your Sunday best on, <laughs> you, you there, you're ready for the date. You're, you, you're um, trying to have a good time, right? So the server comes and starts asking for your orders. You allow her to order first, ladies first. And she proceeds to bypass the deal, Bruh. which was the $2 tacos, was, which was the reason why you took her there because you balling on a budget. And she proceeds to order everything but the tacos. She's ordering spaghetti. She's ordering burgers. She's ordering meatloaf. I didn't even know they served meatloaf. Bruh. Next thing you know, you got like $48 and some change in your bank account. And while she's ordering, you become a whole mathematician and you're trying to calculate everything in your mind. Like, how much is this going to be? By the time the server asks you what you want, you like water and how much does two fries cost? <laughs> Struggling, bro. Let's get back to it. So let's get back to this article. All right, let's go here. So it indicates, it indicates here. Get this off my screen, man. A third of women only date men because of the free food, according to a study. This was posted by the New York Post. The results are in. She only wanted to try that hot new restaurant. Do fellas know what I'm talking about? Yep. A new study published Friday in the Society for Personality and Social Psychology Journal found that a quarter to a third of heterosexual women have gone on a date with a guy they weren't interested in just for a free meal. They call it foodie calls. Can happen when money's tight. The grocery store is out of <laughs> a favorite frozen meal or a must try entree. Bruh. <laughs> the grocery store <laughs> is out of a frozen meal or a must try entree. And it's just too extravagant to justify when the tab comes out of your own bank account. Two studies, the first conducted with 820 women and the second with 327 acts participants. If they ever engage in a plate for play, 23% of women cop to it in the first study. 33% in the second. That's just the people who cop to it. I would guess it's higher than that. Because do we think any women want to go out on a date and pay for it? Nope. Let's continue. The researchers, Brian Collison, Jennifer Howell, and Trista Herrick of Azusa Pacific University in UC Merced. I don't even know where that is. Also noted that the women who felt dating for food was socially acceptable were more likely to exhibit the dark triad of personality traits. And if you're not familiar with dark triad, that is psychopathy, Machiavellianism and narcissism for those without a PhD in psych, which I definitely don't have. In addition to ego, wow. 
Collison said, foodie callers are more likely to engage in one night stands, faking an, faking an orgasm, or sending unsolicited uh, spicy pictures. And with climbing rents and ever expanding list, list of rest, restaurants in New York, might well be teaming with foodie calls. One East Villager, Olivia Bowsinger, was treated to a five course meal at the C and B Seen Seafood Joint catch in the meeting pack district. She said, if I had been forced to pay, I probably wouldn't have been able to eat for weeks afterward. Bruh. That's what's going on nowadays. That's what a lot of young men are facing. Are you one of those young men that are that is dealing with this issue? Well, don't don't fret. You're not alone. There are a lot of men who are experiencing the same thing. I'm 33 and I experienced it when I was a teenager and as a, a man in my early 20s. And I really didn't start to get aware of what was going on and cognizant of how the the system had been being manipulated until I was a bit older. So I was like, maybe like 26, 27. I was like, okay, this isn't adding up. I am spending way too much money on these dates going out and all this type of type of stuff. And it's not really serving me at all. So I've talked about in previous content that I've put out that young men need to prioritize their time. Okay. You need to pri prioritize making sure that you're building yourself up and that you are becoming a better man. So on the back end, you can go out and you can do these dates and stuff. When you're a young man in process, your time is way, way better served doing something else. That's just the honest truth. And I know that you got urges and needs and stuff. We all understand how the horm hormones are raging when you're a young man. However, trust me, I wish I would have did things differently as a young man. I would be set up better now in the future financially if I didn't spend as much money as I spent, just waste it on people who had you in, in your, had you in their phone as taco night or as, you know, food, you know, as Dumbo pretty much. And I'm, and that's not to say that women are bad or anything, but when some women have definitely expo exploited the system and I would venture to guess it's higher than 33%. Okay. So moving on and continuing with the program today, what's another part of the problem? The first thing we covered was the foodie call epidemic. All right. It's been widely documented and studied and women have admitted to it. A lot of women, What's been reported is around 33%, which I would say is higher, have been going out on dates with men and with no in romantic intentions just to get some of that great food at that seafood spot. What do you think she ordered? Uh, a salmon? I, I, I like sea bass myself, but that's neither here nor there. The second issue is debt. Men are going into a lot of debt because of these dates, putting them on credit. Wow. That's just the honest truth. So let's go into the actual statistics here. Why are so many young people in debt? Let's talk about the young people that are in debt right now. All right. So it says here, here's how much debt the average 20 something has. All right. New Experian data finds consumers in their 20s and 30s have up to $27,000 in credit card debt from auto loans and student loans debt, D student loan debt. Now I understand student loan debt and, and what have you, but I would venture to say that the, a lot of the credit card debt is actually from going out on dates, going out, trying to impress people for dating. This plays a factor. So even if it's not directly tied to dating, the fact that you're in debt from auto loans, student loan debts and stuff, you're not in a position where you should be just spending money on somebody who has you in their phone as taco boy. Just saying. Okay. And you want to know a telltale sign? 
something that I would tell young men. If you're talking to a woman and it's progressing to the point where you might go out on a date and she brings up going out on the date and not only she brings up going out on a date, she tells you, I would like to go to this specific restaurant. Bruh, red flag. I'm going to tell you why. First of all, you should be planning the first date for the most part and her offering. And especially if it's not just a kickback, if it's a very expensive restaurant, red flag, man. I'm just going to say, and this is going for younger people. If you're like, you know, 18, 19 up to when you're, you know, 23, 24, even 25, unless you're financially set, unless you uh, really have done well for yourself, it's, it's better things you can do. You could go to a happy hour. I would recommend going to a happy hour. Uh, I don't like for, for on first dates going and sitting down at a dinner. I, I would prefer going to a happy hour at a bar. And I say all of this to say, I am not a dating coach. I'm not trying to be a dating coach, but I'm just trying to give you perspective on life so you can move in a way that's going to help you get the outcomes that you want. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, I wish I had somebody telling me this stuff, you know, when I was younger. And I mean, I learned through experience, but if I could help the next person, then more power to it. You know what I mean? So if you're watching on the replay again, do me a favor, like the video if you're getting value. And we're just going to continue on with the program here. Okay. so another thing that I wanted to get into was. Young men really struggling with dating. So we covered already a little recap. We covered the foodie date epidemic as part of the problem. The second part of the problem is also men are going into debt. They got credit card debt. They got auto loans. They got student loans. They're not in a financial position to just be wasting on money on somebody who is just using them for food because they ain't got nothing in their fridge but some hungry man dinners. I mean, did I lie? Am I telling the truth? (laughs) Just saying. So the other problem is men are really struggling because of the inception of social media. Okay. Isolation from not doing well in dating. And let's talk about it. So this is courtesy of medium. All right. Let me get this pulled. Uh, This is courtesy of Medium. And let's see what this says. So according to Medium.com, young American men are facing a crisis. There's a growing cohort of bored, lonely, poorly educated men, and they're a terrifying force in society who are addicted to social media and awash with G-U-N-S's. All right. That took a turn. So it indicates here American men share of college enrollment right there. So men are, you know, bowing out of, well, no, 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 pardon me. It says share of college enrollment and share of 18 to 30 year olds reporting no SEX in the past year. Ooh, for men. Goes on to say here, I've mentioned this topic before, highlighting an emerging crisis among young men. And it elicits a range of emotions and responses, especially in the reductionist world of social media. You remember what I said about social media and what it did? The inception of social media, what it caused was women to have way more options to be getting DM by men with status, money, resources. Of course, they're going to take those options if they're getting those offers the majority of the time. And it's siphoned off and kind of limited a whole huge bunch of men from the dating pool. That's always happened in society, but it's just heightened. It's exaggerated now in this current climate. And what does that cause? It causes a lot. It causes a lot of men who are isolated, lonely. And I'm, I'm not doing this to say you should feel sorry for these guys, but this is a prevalent issue and problem in society. All right. Let's continue on. 
get this, get my camera right. All right, cool. It says, this is quite the projection. Oh, somebody says that. I hope someone has SEX with you soon. It's a problem. So it goes on to say that family matters. Families are the foundational element of society. This is a solution. And most successful families are the product of an int intimate relationship between two adults. The most important decision most of us make in life is whether and whom to marry. And the most important person in our adult lives is our mate. Married people are 77% wealthier than single people. And their net worth typically increases 16% each year they're together. That's a typo. Oh, no, that's right. That's right. Married people living longer and happier. Pardon me. Married people live longer and are happier than single people. Higher marriage rates are correlated with greater GDP per capita, greater economic mobility, and a reduction in child poverty as much as 80%. So that's a solution there. Get married. But hey, I'm, I wasn't born yesterday. How do you get married if a lot of guys aren't even getting any play at the end of the day? It's a big issue. Social media has caused this conundrum. Women have more options or perceived options than they've ever had before. And they're only looking at 10 to 20 percent of the men for the most part. The majority of women are only looking at 10 to 20 percent of men on social media men who are over six feet, who make around six figures, uh, attractive, socially calibrated, all those things. Okay. So what do we do? Let's continue here. It says the path to forging the relationships involves SEX. If a young adult hasn't had SEX in the past year, it's unlikely that that person is on the path toward a long-term bond with someone to be clear. I'm not suggestion suggesting that it is any one group's responsibility to, you know, sp service one another, but it talks about how there needs to be thought on how policies and attitudes ensure that most people have the opportunity and motivation to pursue a long-term productive relationship. Basically what, what he's saying is they want people to be getting married. A society with a lot of men who have no release, who are, you know, kind of siphoned off from the dating pool isn't good. The institution of marriage, I think, initially was put in place to actually make sure that it, there is, um, you know, hope for some of these people um, because back in the day, like if you look, think about the times of Genghis Khan and stuff back then, the Kings, the Sultans and like all of the Royal Royal people and the people of high prestige had all the women, they had, you know, multiple wives and concubines and you name it. So the institution of marriage actually helps help to civilize society because it gave a man who was just living, living in, you know, living, having a normal wage, a living wage gave him an opportunity to have a family, but with the hyper polarized marketplace that social media has caused, it has, you know, kind of fractured some of that stability. And that's what we have now. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just giving you the facts, the problem, the issue, that a lot of men are facing. Okay. And I said that I was going to give you some solutions. The only real solution that I see is as a man, you need to do the best that you can to make yourself a more viable option. If you're short, there's nothing you could do with that. Okay. When it comes to fitness and stuff like that, I'm not saying you got to be some bodybuilder or whatever, but eat healthy, go to the gym. If you can lose weight, if you're overweight and you know, not aesthetically in the best shape, you could tell, you know, if you are, that's some things that you can do 
to increase your value. Also, even more so than looks, for men, you have to be financially progressing, working towards being somebody that can provide security because that's what women look for more so than anything. Somebody who is uh, socially calibrated, who can provide financial security, somebody who is not a pushover because I've talked about this before in the past too. As a man, you cannot be a nice guy. Sorry. All of the romance novels, all of the stuff we've been fed as young people growing up, all of the romantic comedies and stuff is bull crap. Absolutely bull crap. Does it work? Nope. Have you tried it before and gotten good results? Nope. Trust me, it doesn't work. You don't have to be rude. However, you need to be somebody who has their own things going on, is driven and motivated inherently to be better. And a byproduct of that is you get a relationship. But you can't make your priority obtaining a girlfriend or potentially a wife. Your priority needs to be on you getting better day by day and a byproduct of that is she'll notice you and she'll notice that you are somebody to be able to provide leadership, security, and you're taking care of yourself. That's attractive. And I think what happens is men kind of get lost in that despair sometime of I'm getting bypassed. I can't help this situation. And they get helpless. And what we don't want in society is a bunch of men who are hopeless that is not what you want. You need to take ownership of your faults and you only can deal with what you can control. So what are my faults? What are my weaknesses? And day by day, start making decisions and choices to improve. All right. If you know that you've been sitting around eating Cheetos all the time, playing PS4, or PS5, Xbox, and you haven't been in the gym in ages. All right. You, you waste all your money on VC on NBA 2K, if you are going to the bar drinking up all of the money from your paycheck, you're making a job that's close to minimum wage or you haven't gotten a raise in a while, what can you do to improve your situation? You have options. You just haven't made the choice to change it. You've been wallowing in that despair. And what I'm here to tell you is you can change what you got going on but you have to make the decision if you want it or not. And it's not to get a girlfriend, it's not to get women, but it's to improve your quality of life. That would be my advice to a man who is struggling, a young person who is struggling with the dating market and what how things have currently you know, developed over time and digressed over time. And the people who are gonna reap the benefits of this current dating market are the people who set themselves up to be a better version of themselves. Because, yes, it's gotten difficult for young men in the dating market. Women have all the options and stuff when they're younger. However, as they get older, those options start to go down. And a man who is doing all the things that he needs to do to become the best version of himself, his options get better as he ages. So from 18 to 30, I ain't going to lie, as a young man growing up, when you're in process, it's not the best. It is not the best situation. However, I can say I am reporting back. I'm 33. My life has been getting better as I've gotten older. Comes more wisdom, comes more knowledge. Trust me. And I'm, I can't wait to, to get gray hair. I can't wait to uh, throw on a suit. Shout out to Kevin Samuels and uh, get my Idris elbow on. You know what I mean? I'm looking forward to salt and pepper. It's nothing wrong with Asian as a man, as long as you're continuing to focus on getting better day by day. I'm not finished yet. I got a lot of things to prove. I got a lot of things to do. And that's the type of mentality that I want you to have. I think that there's too much negativity on people right now and the circumstances that they have, and they let that affect too many things. We only can control what we can control. Before I go off on too much of a tangent, 
let me give some more credence to what I was saying earlier, talking about these uh, social media and these apps, okay? So here's another thing I wanted to say. All right, I'm gonna share the screen here. So it says here, New York Post again, men are having less SEX and dating apps are to blame. Evan Pipta, 28, single and looks pretty good on paper, got washboard apps. he has been working in the gym. He has a job as a software developer, so he makes good money. He likes rock climbing, electronic music, and lives in a trendy area. He also hasn't had SEX in a year. And even that was a one night stand, he says. He says, what's wrong? So what's wrong with him, it says. Nothing. According to new data from the General Social Survey, researchers surveyed 2,348 adults and found that 28% of men under 30 had gone a year or more without SEX. That's nearly tripled the amount of dudes who reported year-long dry spells in 2008. Young men are having less SEX. He says he chalks it up to an over-reliance on online dating a system that he says he has lost that has lost its sparkle over the past decade. They're getting fed up with it. 10 years ago, people would always get back to me online. Who's tried his luck on OkCupid, Tinder, and Hinge. Now it's only half the time or less. People are experiencing fatigue with this stuff. It's been years. All right. It's been years. He says, these days, he feels like he's swiping through more wannabe influencers and bots than actual potential dates. Mm -hmm. Everyone always doing some type of self-promotion. When someone's reaching out to you, you don't know if they're trying to make a real connection or sell you something. Mm. He says young men really... It says here, young men really don't want know how to navigate the space of SEX anymore. He says he feels like he never learned how to put the moves on a lady off screen. Ah, that's a big key. He says, I was so dependent on online dating in my early 20s. That's when people learn a lot of their skills. He says, I feel like I have to relearn how to find dates and have SEX with people that I like without using apps. That is a very profound point. Hmm. That's, a, that's, that was a great point. I don't want to go through the whole article, but what he said there is important. Let's go here. I'm 33. So I was dating already and I've had some experience and stuff before the iPhone got huge and before like dating apps like Tinder and everything really went mainstream. I remember a time where you still had to call somebody on the phone. You didn't know who they were till they picked up. You had to go out and talk to somebody. If you ask, if you wanted to go on a date with somebody, you actually had to talk to them in person. I am so grateful for that, that, that that was my experience because I was able to develop those skills. These younger people, Gen Z, what you guys are have experienced, you've always been in a dating environment where there's been social media apps and there's been Bumble and Hinge and Tinder and OkCupid and Lord forbid, plenty of fish. It's tough. They never really had a chance to experience life without that. And let's be honest, let's be real. The biggest dating app in the world is technically not a dating app, but we all know it is. And that's Instagram. Instagram is the biggest dating app in the world, because if you see anybody you like, you could they're just one DM away. All right. If they got a blue check, forget about it. Right. If a, if a dude with a blue check, holla, holla at your girl. That's tough. All right. You might lose your girl. <laughs> you know, that's what these young men have to deal with. That's what all men have to deal with now. Um, I kind of lost my train of talk, thought, but I'll get back to it. 
But what he said about not having that experience, I think that really affects young men. But we can't go back. There's no putting that toothpaste back in the tube. They have to navigate what the reality is now. And the reality is now you're competing with every man all across the world now, not just the men in your neighborhood. So you have no choice but to get better, but to increase your ability to provide security, to um, focus on your health, focus on developing yourself as a person, having more conversations in person with people. The only way you can do that is you got to just get out there and do it. I'll say it again. I'm not a dating coach, but I'm a guy who have has experienced life. And one thing I can tell you, people aren't attracted to somebody trying to put moves on them. They are attracted to people who are confident and people who are confident are confident because of their accomplishments. And because of those accomplishments, they will get the confidence. So you have to continue to do that. And failure and rejection is just a part of life. I've been rejected multiple times in dating and in life and with things that I've been doing. Like, uh, I got laid off uh, like maybe what, like four or five years back. And I actually had to go work a job where I was direct selling door to door. I was going to people's door and knocking, selling a product, getting door slammed in my face, rejected time after time. And you know what? It's one of the best experiences that ever happened to me in my life because it forced me to get used to that rejection and that failure. If you're a guy and you're actively pursuing women and wanting to get in a relationship and wanting to have experiences with women, you need to go and experience rejection because that's a part of life. Just do your best, learn from each experience and go from there. That's my best advice to you in that incidence. So what else do we have here? All right, I'm gonna get me some water. And I want to end the show doing something a little different, something I usually don't do. We're going to be reacting to um, a TikTok. And I saw this. This is a young lady giving. This is let me set this up a little bit. I'm not on TikTok that much. I have a TikTok at Care Juice Podcast, but I'm not on there consuming content that much. But I've seen that there's been a lot of people giving dating advice on TikTok. A lot of women giving dating advice on TikTok. And I saw some of these videos and oh, oh boy, the advice is something to behold. So I'm going to share my screen and show you what I'm talking about here. So we're going to be reacting to creative.gia. Shout out to her. This is no slight at her. We're going to see what she says. And then I'm going to give my, my thoughts on it. So if you're watching on the replay, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. All right, let's try again. A girlfriend recently asked me for some dating app advice and I had a lot to say, so I thought I'd just share it here. This advice is only gonna be pertinent to the girls that are actually looking for relationships. Number one, pictures. There is a direct correlation between the amount of ass and titties that are shown and fuck boys that end up matching you. If you're wanting to catch a high value man's attention, leave a little to the imagination. Number two, don't match with more than five guys a week. This just goes back to the paradox of choice. The more options we have, the less we are able to make decisions and the less happy we are with the decisions that we do finally make. Number three, limit communication on the app. If you're interested in a guy, give him your number as soon as possible. Tell him you're not on the app that often and that he can call you whenever he's available. If he texts you, do not respond. If he tries to connect with you on another app, block him. All right, this is where it's getting talked. Number four, planning the date. Never allow a man access to making plans with you the day of. This is less about playing games than you think. Ideally, you 
would have enough going on in your life that it would be impossible for you to change plans the last minute. But even if you do not have something going on, it is important that you create boundaries when you first begin dating. We teach people how to treat us. You are teaching your partner that they do not have unlimited access to you without any trust built. Number five, trick yourself out of the performance mindset that a lot of women have on a first date by convincing yourself that this is just like meeting up with a new friend. View it as an opportunity to meet someone new and learn about them and understand who they are as a person in this world. This mind hack definitely helps to relieve any pre-date anxiety and diminishing any post-date expectations. All right. So we're going to break this down all the way from the beginning. So the first thing that she said, I'll give her her credit. I don't disagree with the first thing she said, but I, I got to get into some of these other a ones. A girlfriend so recently asked me for some again. dating app advice, and I had a lot to say, so I thought I'd just share it here. This advice is only going to be pertinent to the girls that are actually looking for relationships. Number one, pictures. There is a direct correlation between the amount of ass and titties that are shown and fuck boys that end up matching you. All right. So... I'll give her kudos on the amount of uh, voluptuous curves that are shown. You are going to attract a certain uh, energy if you are not wearing clothes or they're wearing very scantily clad stuff in your pictures. Now, when it comes to F boys being what you attract, it's just going to be men who want something casual. If you call that F boys or whatever, so be it. But that's what you're advertising by constantly having your backside tooted up and not wearing much clothing in your pictures. You get the energy that you put out. So I don't disagree with that part. Wanting to catch a high value man's attention, leave a little to the imagination. Now, when it comes to attracting a high value man, it depends on what that high value man wants. High value men... I mean, they have eyes, they like what they like, but it just de depends on what, what they're going to be wanting not after you. I would say if you are show, showing a lot of skin, all that type of stuff, the high value man probably will still deal with you, but it's just not going to be on a relationship level. It's going to be something more casual. So let's continue on. Number two, don't match with more than five guys a week. This just goes back to the paradox of choice. The more options we have, the less we are able to make decisions and the less happy we are with the decisions that we do finally make. Number three, lim Number two, I don't have a problem with number two because that's what we talked about in this stream. Women having access to more options than they ever had before, because let's be honest, an average woman on a dating app and an average guy on a dating app, the woman is going to wipe the floor with them because men are just programmed to pursue women. So a lot of women who are just average looking get way more attention than the average guy. And if a woman is above average or very attractive, she's getting DMs from people like Drake and future and NBA players and you name it. And you know, sultans from Dubai or whatever. So having all those options, it's a gift and a curse because you have like this endless possibilities you think, but it also clouds your judgment because you think that those guys who are giving you attention for maybe casual stuff are, you know, taking you here and taking you there. But you're thinking that it could possibly be more, but there's a difference between that casual attention that you're getting in those fun, you know, fleeting moments and that actual real connection and relationship. So I agree with, with what she's saying uh, there, though, about um, that, that the communication point. on the app. If you're interested in a guy, give him your number. Yeah. What she talked about, she talked about matching with um, only five. I, I agree with that part. As soon part. as possible. Tell him you're not on the app that often and that he can call you whenever he's available. If he texts you, do not respond. If he tries to connect with you on another app, block him. The instructions were clear. Number four, planning the date. Never allow a man access to making plans with you the day of. This is less about playing games than you think. Ideally, you would have enough going on in your life that it would be impossible for you to change plans the last minute. But even if you do not have something going on, it is important that you create boundaries when you first begin in dating. We teach people how to treat us. You are teaching your partner that they do not have unlimited access to you without any trust built. Number five. 
I thoroughly disagree with that point. I'm gonna tell you why. I thoroughly disagree with that point because I'm the type of person, I'm a horrible planner. I'm not that good at planning stuff in advance. And I like spontaneity. And what I would say to her, what she's saying is these rules and what she's outlining is for a guy who she doesn't really like that much. Because if it's a guy with a blue check or if it's a guy who has enough status, he could tell her, hey, I'm going to be here tonight. I'm, I'm in business. I'm in town for this trip or whatever. And I'm going to this restaurant. Do you want to come? And it could be the day of and she'll be like, OK, OK. A woman, if she really likes a guy, she'll break rules for that guy. All right. And I'm the type of guy where I like to just do stuff in the moment. I'll be at work or something like that. And I'll like to just be like, hey, I want to go get happy, happy hour here uh, later. You Are you free? And I'll just go. It's not that I'm trying to just not plan, but that's just how I like to move. I like to do things in the moment. Sp spontaneity. And I don't think necessarily a, a guy is looking at you just casually. If he does that, he could just really actually be a busy guy. And he has a lot of stuff in his itinerary itinerary that he has going on. And he wants to spend some time with you. And he's trying to, you know, make that happen. I don't plan stuff way in advance like that. No, absolutely not. So I don't agree with that point. But let's continue. Take yourself out of the performance mindset that a lot of women have on a first date. Let's go back a little bit. She said something about a performance mindset, the last one. Take yourself out of the performance mindset that a lot of women have on a first date by convincing yourself that this is just like meeting up with a new friend. View it as an opportunity to meet someone new and learn about them and understand who they are as a person in this world. This mind hack definitely helps to relieve any pre-date anxiety and diminishing any post-date expectations. All right, so that last part, I mean, you could take or leave what she's saying with that last part as far as any performance anxiety and stuff. My only question to that would be, why why are you thinking you need to perform at all? You shouldn't have to perform at all. Just be your authentic self. Authentically express yourself, and you shouldn't have to worry about having any type of performance anxiety or trying to figure out if the person will like you or not. Like, I don't worry about that at all. If it's going to work out, it's going to work out. And I would say to anybody that's going and trying to meet somebody, you should just be trying to be authentically yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. You should be confident and you should be confident based on the things that you've done in your life. As far as from the female perspective, I really can't speak to that. But I would say if you have good character, if you have good intentions and stuff, you shouldn't have to worry about any type of performance anxiety. You should be showing that guy that if you you should be inquisitive and looking to see what type of person it is, but you shouldn't be trying to like worry about if you have performance anxiety or whatever. If you really like the guy, you're going to naturally move in your feminine energy and your feminine state. And you're going to show him that you are attracted to him just by your actions. You're not going to be able to control it. It's going to be something that just naturally happens. So, I think with a lot of the game playing and all of the antics and stuff like that, when all of that goes into play, it, really that happens for people who aren't really that attracted to the person. If you're really attracted to the person and you have good, you know, a good connection and all that, she'll break rules for you. She will show you that she's interested in you. And if she's, you know, playing these games and all that type of stuff, that's a red flag to me. Uh, she has some good points though, when it talks about, limiting the amount of people that you're going on all these dating apps with. Uh, and also the first point that she brought up, it's kind of not ringing my mind here, but I think all in all, that one wasn't the most horrible TikTok. Uh, I'll look at things, you know, at a case by case basis. I had some other ones, but I think that's enough for the stream right now. Maybe I'll do another uh, episode where I'm talking and I'm kind of reacting to TikToks. Let me know what you think about this little twist, this little change in the format, talking, uh, doing like a reaction in an episode that's pertinent to the subject matter that we were talking about. And hey, that's been another episode of the Carrot Juice Podcast. If you enjoyed this content, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop content. 
If this is your first time listening to the Carrot Juice Podcast here on the Carrot Juice Podcast, I provide commentary and perspective on popular culture. We talk about dating like we did here today. I add in some true crime as well as productivity so you can get your mind right and you can be more productive in your life. Please, for my audio listeners, rate and review the podcast. Five star, five star, five star. Really helps out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you do that. Last but not least, this podcast is produced, written, edited, everything by yours truly, Monte Lee. And like I say every time, here at the Carrot Juice Podcast, love someone, hug someone. Do something good for somebody, not expecting anything in return. And until next time, I will see you. Peace. We are gone.